Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's Reggie, and it is an uber cat fruit evolution -y day because it is time for exactly that. We today shall be evolving Princess Kaguya, or however you may pronounce that name. Beautiful cat on assignment from the moon. Her true nature is still top secret. Might slow angel slash metal enemies. Now this is all very good. Its evolved form at level 10 is the Death Moon. A prototype of one of many ancient cat weapons made from stolen blueprints might, again, slow angel or metal enemies with area attack. Now, the theme sort of starts to develop between them, which should carry into the evolved form, which, if we look, is called the Chaos Moon. True form evolution increases all traits and adds the ability to 100% slow movement of angel and metal enemies. And this costs 1 million XP, along with four green cat fruit, four red cat fruit, five blue cat fruit, eight yellow cat fruit, which is very difficult to get, and three epic cat fruit, which for some reason I have absolutely loads of because cat fruit stages just keep giving me that. So we have enough to evolve this thing. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna click the evolve button now and watch as the death moon is surrounded by cat fruit and explodes into the Nuba Super Air. I said Nuba Super, I don't know why. The Chaos Moon with colours and exciting things. It's what you get in some true forms, like, well, I guess Thundia's se second form sort of has quite a lot of colours. This one has his third form more colourful. That just seems to tend to happen during the game. And the theme you may recognise is a sort of Star Wars-y theme. I was looking on the wiki and it turns out that this is sort of, and I, I can see it, resemblant of Star Killer Base. If any of you have seen Star Wars Episode 7, I imagine quite a few of you have. And so yes, that's a pretty good looking cat. So its new description is almost annihilated the galaxy once. Oops. That can happen when you design an AI with no conscience. That can happen. Anyway, slows angel slash metal, so it is 100% probable now. And speaking of, well sort of speaking of stats, here's the stats. I've taken them from the wiki. Thanks wiki. That was useful. Now they're up on the screen to be able to pause it. See how fabulous it truly is. So the icon of it now is sort of golden as all true forms seem to be and it looks very nice indeed. But for the first stage of this new cat fruit evolution system which I'm trialling, we are going to be putting it into the challenge to observe its attack animation and its looks generally to give it some marks. Into the challenge we are now, and what we're going to do is we're just going to wait to save up for this. It costs 3,200 in challenge mode, but I believe 4,800 in normal Stories of Legend, i.e. Chapter 2 Empire of Cats price, which is basically what it is throughout most of the game. So we can now get this cat, and as you can see, it is flipping massive, and it shoots a massive spiky death ray. That looks amazing. Looking at the cat itself, in my opinion, the intricacy and detail of the design is really nice. Whereas some cats have really basic design, I really like the way that this looks. And I do like the swirling animated sort of, I don't know, death chamber. Um, and there's of course the princess sitting on top in a sort of death rocket. And then they all sort of come together into it during the attack animation. And as you can see with this poor Squire Rel here, a sort of few things happen and the laser builds up and shoots forward into the enemy. It's looking pretty good so far. I really like the look of the cat as well as whirring machinery in the background looks very good indeed. I can't hear what it sounds like if there are sounds to it but the attack itself as well, the fact that it hits the Squire L and explodes in a sort of leafy green looks very nice. The Death Moon is sort of like that but just not as much pronounced and I think this is a wonderful evolution. It looks very nice and has a very nice attack animation. I think for it to be an uber super rare, it should be very special, and this is in fact very special. I think it is a very, very well put together cat with nice design and nice attack animation. So in fact, for each of these categories, I am going to give them a 5 out of 5, giving them a 10 out of 10 so far. And the next category that we are going to be going on to is usefulness. <laughs> Right. 
Right, let's see how our little, well, this massive, massive sort of moon fares against a load of sloths. Because I have done my reading on the old wiki, and do you know what the wiki says? The wiki says that this cat can be extremely good against sloths. And here is why. Because of its amazing range statistic, it has the ability to outrange the sloth. You know the big scary one? The big one that does loads of damage with a smash to the floor of its head? Yeah, it can outrange that. Which might be extremely useful. We're about to find out whether it can outrange the elder sloth. I guess all we have to do is just wait for it to sit there, charge up its ray, and see if the Elder Sloth does anything to it. So the shot is getting ready. And yes, the Elder Sloth does seem to hit it. That's that's not good at all, really, is it? But hopefully, we'll be able to get a shot in. The Elder Sloth does attack faster than the Elder Sloth, but it's still not amazingly fast. And yeah, okay. So it's not good against the Elder Sloth. Let's try it against the other Sloth. Right, in goes our Abrahamet lad. Hopefully we'll be able to deal with this Elder Sloth. I think this is how you deal with it in this level. I hope so, because otherwise we got one very dead Bahamut. And at the moment, we'll, we look like we're going to get that. But no, Bahamut so does survive a hit, so hopefully we can actually, well, do something to this Elder Sloth and dispatch it forever. I'm hoping. Nothing seems to be happening. The sloth's creeping in from the background, and Bahamut's dead. But that's lost gone. Excellent. Right, so we can get ourselves our Chaos Moon now. And so hopefully this will be able to demonstrate the fact that it can, in fact, outrange the sloth that we have ahead of us. The big scary sloth with its stupid smug smile as it laughs at everyone. But theoretically, our Chaos Moon should be able to outrange this guy. And because none of my other stuff can, I'm just going to leave it and just save up my worker cap for now. As the Chaos Moon takes its relatively, well not too long between attacks shot, to hit the sloth. And this is as simple as that. You just put this slap bang, especially on a level like Cursed Blizzards. Slap bang in the middle of the field and just watch it hit the sloth. Because there are no, I think they're called peons, little kind of squish, squishy enemies which sort of destroy you if you have a setup like this, usually. But with none of them, this can just sit here and hit the sloth without the sloth hitting it, which is completely invaluable, and the sloth just hit it. Have I been lied to? Are people lying to me? Or was that just a really unfortunate element of timing? Because if that was an unfortunate element of timing, that's good, but it... Well, I mean... I, I give up. So, as for the usefulness mark that I give it, I have to approach this with a bit of caution, and this has been by far the most difficult part of this video to produce, because I want to be able to showcase how good the cat is in its field of study in which it's best. Because otherwise, it's like putting me in a science competition. It's not going to end well except for me getting majorly triggered and not doing particularly well. We want the cat to excel in its desired field. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have done so. It's supposed to be able to outrange the sloth, but apparently, while doing its attack, it doesn't do so. And one of its abilities is actually fairly pointless. And that is the fact that it can slow metal enemies. Now, I'll put a clip on the screen now of me fighting the Super Metal Hippo with this, and I got several death moons, it was ridiculous, but it took, like, the best part of an hour to do that level, because the best way to deal with metal enemies is a critical hit, and slowing metal enemies only works in some cases, like maybe with metal doges, but then critical hits work better with them as well, I think, and I can't really think of many examples where you would use something other than critical hits. It's just always better to have critical hits against metal enemies because they do so much damage to them. Normal attacks, even if they slow them, are in the end not particularly useful. Or at least I don't think they are, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that they are. Being able to slow angels can be useful, but the big angel enemies in the game. I'm thinking Angel Klee 1 in No Plan A. A very, very difficult level indeed. This won't help because it's relatively quite a slow cat and Angel Klee 1, as soon as it does its bish bash bosh attack and lays its 
force of destruction down on the field of battle, you're dead. And so this cat doesn't really work for that either. And so, although its abilities are fun, I don't think it's actually an incredibly useful cat. There are Ubers out there which are going to be a lot, lot better than that cat. It's a very nice looking cat, but ultimately, I don't think that it's a very useful cat. And that is a shame, I guess. Maybe I'm not using it properly, but I've gone to as many lengths as I can to try and use it properly, but in every case it just doesn't seem to work, and that's really quite sad. So, for the effectiveness, or usefulness as I believe I called it, I mean, out of 10, I can only really give that one a 5, in my opinion. It's got abilities, for sure, but they're not entirely useful and they don't always seem to work anyway. Which is actually really sad, as I've said loads of times now. And finally, affordability. Now, affordability factors in the cost, which is 4,800, which I think is reasonable. That's fine. But affordability also in terms of how likely you are to get this cat. It is in fact a gacha cat, so it's just random. And it's an uber super rare, meaning it is quite difficult to get it. I'm not sure if it's in any other draws other than Ultra Soul, so you'd have to wait for that to come round. Whether you wait for a guaranteed uber or you just hope to get lucky, but then your guaranteed uber may not be that. So there's a lot of variables and it's going to be a pretty rare cat to be able to get. And so for that you expect it to be outstanding. And the abilities that it has, I don't think that they are massively useful. That is the shame. And the amount of cat fruit and XP it takes, although I had a lot of cat fruit so it didn't take too long, it is a monumental amount to try and gather together, especially given the RNG that you have in the levels as to whether you get nothing, a cat fruit seed which is useless for uber evolutions, or the cat fruit itself, especially when they cost 200 energy to do at a time, although the cat fruit buffets are better, you spend 500 energy and you get to do all the stages as well as the cat fruit jubilee. But it's quite a difficult cat to get and overall abilities wise I don't find it very useful. Now I've always thought I'd be in danger of saying that without thoroughly investigating it first, but I feel like I've done all I can to try and give this cat a chance to shine in the areas that it should shine, and it just doesn't. It can do brilliant splash damage, as evidenced by the challenge, and I'm sure it has its uses. Its recharge time is very good, so you can actually get a large stack if you're waiting for a while in a level, but it's not massively useful abilities wise and that is really what you want in an uber they have the special special abilities that will help you get through levels and they're what are necessary in later stories of legend levels like for example our resident tutorialists find it quite difficult to do i think is dark web three star a very difficult level which i am nowhere near yet needs gacha cats to be able to do it and this is a prime example of you want something that's going to be very special and the abilities don't help on many of the prevalent difficult enemies in the game. So for affordability, I mean I went a bit into usefulness there, but affordability I'm going to give that a 5 as well. So that brings the total to 10 plus 10 plus 10 for the categories and scores, 10 plus 5 plus 5 would make it 20 out of 30. And so, 20 divided by 3, some maths you got going on here, is 6.6 .6 recurring out of 10. So although it's a very good looking cat in my opinion, I have to stress this is all my opinion, my marking system obviously, the appearance is great, but the cat itself doesn't serve a great purpose unfortunately can serve some purpose, but it's just overall a bit disappointing in that area. So that's that's my mark for it. 6.6 .6 out of 10. And please let me know if you would like me to continue doing cat fruit evolutions in this style, a more review-y style, because it may be a cat that you don't have. I thought I'd go through it as much as I can and tell you all about it, tell you what it's good at, tell you what it's not good at. But I've got very tired making this one. Other ones might be more excitable and hopefully better but I'll try and improve these, and if you want me to go on with this sort of scoring format, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed. 
it's time to give this a try on a level. And this is the level at last I'm a cat from... Tries to remember, weak and mildly acidic, which is the Stories of Legend chapter that I am currently working on. And basically, the deal with this is that there is a metal one horn at the start. And as this slows metal enemies, it should ideally be able to have a good effect on these. Now, I don't know if this will necessarily work because there are a lot of other enemies to deal with. And traditionally, the best way to deal with a metal enemy is to do a critical hit to them. And as I have no rich cap, this level might be quite difficult because of the amount of enemies within it. But it will be an interesting way to see how much splash damage this guy can actually do. And immediately, the mass of reindeers and kangaroos were already knocking it back. But you could see it's shot there that it unleashed, destroyed a load of black kangaroos. Not black kangaroos. Black kangaroos are the things that are coming now. Which is why we have spooky scary thunder in our midst to try and deal with them because they can be vicious. In fact, Spooky Scary Thumbia chose a completely awful inopportune time to take a shot. Hopefully she'll be more useful this time the enemies are not in fact on the base, which I believe they will very soon be. And I believe, yes, we've lost. Good. Brilliant. Best review of my life.